Beautiful towns, villages, castles and wonderful nature. Now all of this in one place. You may wonder where is that at? For that you will have to watch this video to the end and strap yourself in for this travel guide. Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel Geomographic. I'm now in Germany in Rüdesheim, traveling with Shasta and Andreas. So Andreas and me, we studied together in Singapore and finally I'm here to visit you. Really happy. It's so happy to, for us to have you here. Beautiful region, so they're going to show me the best things that you can do in this region. So let's explore it together. Dress and I, we have done our PhD together in Singapore and he always told me about this beautiful home region but for a very long time just really had no idea how to imagine it. Well, could have just googled the place simply but just never did. I actually always wanted myself to be surprised. Now, when I chose to visit him in October 2021, then I just realized, wow, he lives in a really beautiful place. So the first thing is done, he took me up to the vineyards just above Rüdesheim from there, we could enjoy beautiful views down to the River Rhine. By the way, that's just the same river passing my hometown in Switzerland. And then we also got a really great vista over the town of Rüdesheim. Apparently, the town is quite well famous. Having walked among the vineyards, this definitely has very much reminded me of this beautiful region in southern Switzerland around Lake Geneva called Lavo. I'm sure if you stay long enough on my channel, you're definitely going to be very familiar with this beautiful region. Now, the difference here is though that the Mittelrheintal in Germany, they're actually quite more known for the wines they produce. Federweisser, Riesling and Eiswein would be very prominent to mention here. As we have been strolling around, I really felt the peace. There was basically nobody up there. This was just really refreshing to my mind. Now, although the view down to the River Rhine has been really beautiful, I also once in a while kept looking up and then saw this beautiful statue. Apparently, that's a very important monument. So, for most of the tourists, you can actually just simply go up there by taking this cabin ride. Now, my friend Andreas, he was driving me up there. And then we arrived at this really impressive monument. So when I arrived there, I got to know that this monument was built to remember the foundation of the German Empire. That actually happened in 1870. This here is the Niederwald Denkmal. It's a very tall monument, really impressive. There are a lot of figures and on top, this is Germania, which is the allegory of Germany. And this monument, it honors the formation and unification of Germany in 1871. Apparently the Niederwald Denkmal is considered to be one of the major monuments being erected under the rule of the Hohenzollern Empire ship. And today this monument with the vineyards and these beautiful towns and castles is considered part of the UNESCO World Heritage Region of the Upper Middle Rhine Valley. Although I was very much enjoying up at the vineyards, especially with this beautiful view, I was really looking forward to visit the town of Rüdesheim. Apparently I got to know that this town is very known among the tourists, in particular among visitors from the United States. Upon exploring Rüdesheim, I felt it's really medieval. There were so many beautiful houses and many alleys. It's definitely very enjoyable, although it is touristy, but still the vibes and all together, it's really great. To me, very eye-catching, I found were the many beautiful alleys and then also the river promenade. Now, the go-to-go spot at Riedesheim, that's the Tosselgasse. Apparently that one is world famous. I'd have to say, it's really pretty, charms with its many restaurants, houses and ivy. Definitely in here, do not forget to snap your perfect memory. I really found visiting this region is very enjoyable. But then I also got to notice, actually the biggest treasure aren't the many wines or the vineyards, it's actually the many castles. There are so many of them, you can find them on the left and on the right side of the River Rhine. We just arrived at the first castle, Sonek. Well, there are a lot of castles here around the Mittelrheintal, really impressive. So, this is the first one. So, Andreas, you come very often here, right? Yeah, for picnicking. Mm -hmm. Is it possible to go up to this tower? Yes, it's 
possible. It's nicely furnished, but you need to book an appointment to go there. Oh, really? Yeah. So how about now? You can ask. Okay, let's try. For convenience, Andreas chose to bring me to the Burg Sonneck. But actually, with such a large choice of castles, I don't think it really matters which one you're going to choose to visit. I'm pretty sure that all of them are going to be very nice. Upon our visit to the Burg Sonneck, got to read that this castle was actually destroyed twice. First of all by the Habsburgian in 1282, and then once more in 1689 this time by the French king Louis XIV. The second time was very devastating because most of the castles on the left shore of the river Rhine they got destroyed. This really shows up to this day. I found the story of the Burg Sonic quite interesting and I guess pretty much all of the castles they have their own unique story. So in total there are around 30 castles in the upper part of the middle Rhine valley. That's a really high density something I found very fascinating. So simply when you're driving through this region, do not forget to take a look on the left and the right. You're going to see many beautiful castles and beautiful villages. After this great visit to the Burg Sonneck, we're heading further downstream to St. Goire. But then Andreas wanted to make another stop because there's this wonderful castle, the Burg Pfalzkaufenstein. That one is definitely very eye-catching. It's actually perfectly preserved and also it's really uniquely located just in the middle of the River Rhine. Well, I guess this unique location was somewhat the perfect insurance because this castle just seems to never have been attacked. And thus, no wonder it is often named as the most beautiful castle in this region. After that, Andreas took me to Sankt Goire, really pretty village with a very nice castle, the Burg Rheinfels. Although the castle was very enjoyable, I have to say the French destruction was very visible. I mean, many of the towers, they were no longer there. I guess the castle has been much bigger in the past, but yet it was still very enjoyable up there. From the castle, we also got a very beautiful view over the River Rhine. You could see some of the castles and also down there, the village of Sankt Goal. Now, although it has been quite windy up there, all in all, it was pretty quiet this even on a Saturday. So you can see although this is considered a touristy region, it's not really crowded. Again, 30 castles, I guess it's definitely a large enough choice. The village of Sankt Guar has been very enjoyable, it's though rather quiet and pretty humbly touristy. Definitely quite marked the contrast to the town of Rüdesheim. There are many beautiful houses and alleys in there, and for those who prefer quiet and pretty villages, then I would say St. Croix is definitely a great choice. The local food was also very nice, and those Germans, they eat a lot of meat and potatoes. And it was really delicious. Now, if you're curious to know more about the wine region of the Lavo in Switzerland, then I'll see you in this video on the upper left.